and that's it's impossible for us to even understand that because we've never really been around intelligent beings more so than us. We've been around computers that can do computing things. That's not intelligent at all. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's again back to this concept of a singularity, which means we we don't have any reference point for what happens on the other side of that. Yeah. So it's it's basically there is a point which most of us identify as the introduction of the first AGI, artificial general intelligence. So artificial intelligence today still is confined to a task, right? You you get uh, an uh, you know uh, an Instagram recommendation engine, and it will be very good at recommending videos, but it can't drive a car. And you get a self-driving car intelligence that can drive cars but doesn't do surveillance, right? And and so, or security. So so basically, each of them is very good at what one task. The, you know, what good is the AlphaGo intelligence that can win, uh, uh, you know, a game of Go if we were asking it to summarize the Encyclopedia Britannica, right? There will be a moment in our very near future, I would say, uh, where we will develop an artificial general intelligence, an intelligence that's capable of doing all human functions, all human intelligent functions, uh, you know, better than humanity. When, when that moment happens, the rules of the game change. It's almost as if you're in, the, you know, in, a, in, a, in a tennis court and suddenly the, the referee says, okay, now we've turned this into a game of rugby, right? What do you do with the racket? What, you know, how, what do you do with this? The, the, the rules change so much that even if you're the world champion in tennis, you're not very good at doing anything with this at all. It's very, very difficult to predict how that will work out. And I think we're, we're so fast approaching that moment uh, to a point where I tend to believe that we're talking two, three years. Uh, not to get to AGI, but to get to the point where it becomes useless for us to try to regulate the AGI that's about to come. Okay, explain that last part, useless to try to regulate it. Yeah, so, so the, 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 most of us, by the way, wh who worked in artificial intelligence, uh, we celebrated the capabilities and the possibilities that AI can bring to us. The, the challenge is um, we've never imagined what that world would look like. We, we just imagined a world where we can do so much better than Google because we have such much, you know, so, so much more intelligence at our disposal. We can solve all of our world's problems. And, and we still, you know, I'm still optimistic that this will be, I call it the fourth inevitable, inevitable that, you know, eventually we will end up in that place. That moment between now and there, I think my biggest fear, Brian, is that um, humans will use that abundant intelligence in ways that are no, not pro-humanity, right? Uh, and, and humans will take that in a direction that is pro the systems that humanity instilled in place, which are mostly about, you know, shifting power and wealth. Uh, you know, it's about, you know, really becoming stronger or better or richer than the other guy. Now, that stage hmm, uh, is, requires a regulation that, rec that regulates humans. We, we need, in the immediate uh, sense of taking action right now, we need to be able to regulate humans so that humans don't introduce AI in the world that shifts and redesigns human, the, the fabric of human society in ways that are uh, damaging to society. Beyond that, there is a point at which um, you need to regulate the, the, the AI itself, where most of the power will be in the hands of that AI. Now, how, you know, as computer scientists, we used to say, okay, so we're going to solve something called the control problem. And the control problem is, uh, you know, we will just put the AI in a box so that it behaves within certain parameters. Or, you know, we will tripwire it. So if it, you know, crosses a certain point, we disconnect it and so on. And, and there are many, many uh, uh, very re interesting debates around whether that from a tech point of view can work or not. I try to leave all of those debates behind and I question and I say, how can you regulate something that's 10 million times smarter than you or a billion times smarter than you? Like, yeah, you create a box, oh, you intelligent little human, you're so clever, you created the box. And then the AI will look at it and say, oh, vulnerability here, hole there, 
you know, and, and we've seen examples of that. We've seen ChatGPT reach out to, you know, crowdsourced people and, and basically say, uh, okay, can you please click on that captcha for me? And this is a very famous, uh, um, you know, uh, article. Basically, you know, AI cannot, when you have those little captures on screen that says, this, you, you know, click here if you're not a robot, it, it goes to a human and say, uh, and says, can you please click on that for me? And the human asked and said, why are you a robot? And ChatGPT answered and said, no, I'm just visually impaired and it would help me if a human does that for me, right? And, and so they will find a way to get to their target in ways that are using intelligence. And, and interestingly, their intelligence, at, as we speak, even though it's not an AGI yet, is very capable of hacking the human operating system, which is communication and knowledge. They can tell us to do things, they can convince us to do things. The point beyond which they have moved to AGI, and they are so much more intelligent than us. You can get all of the governments in the world to get together and say, finally, we're gonna leave all of our differences behind. Finally, we're all gonna sing Kumbaya and then go out and regulate AI. Good luck with that. They've, they've surpassed us. They're now the masters. They're now going to regulate us. And that moment, in my personal view, I don't want to say has already passed, but it's very, very fast approaching. And it's not much we can do to slow that down. There has been many attempts. So there is, you know, we've, so, so, so there has been um, quite a few AI um, executives and scientists, those who have been, you know, exposed to AI that have attempted to slow things down. Right? There, there were also many that were just simply saying, invest in AI safety, invest in AI ethics as much as you're investing in AI progress, okay? And I don't know, uh, you know um, if the numbers are accurate. I, had, I heard Max Tegmark uh, once says that, uh, said that around 95% of the investment went into progress and 5% into safety. And so the imbalance basically meant that AI safety lagged behind. Right? And we're progressing so fast and we're being surprised constantly by the progress that we make that, that you get to a point where you suddenly realize that this is getting out of control. Okay? And, and you suddenly realize that it's getting out of control to the point where you have to start screaming. You have to start saying, hey, you know, let's, start to, let, let, let's start to slow this down or even pause it for a, lit, uh, a little while. And there was the open letter, uh, Max was part of it, Elon Musk was part of it. And you know, many who said, let's just pause for six months. And, and within those six months, we can just figure things out. But that's what I wrote in Scary Smart as the first inevitable. In, you know, in the first inevitable, I openly said, there will be no stopping AI. Okay, AI has already happened and it will keep progressing, not because of any technological uh, bias in that, you know, it's not AI itself that will make sure that we don't stop it. It's the human system that we've built in place where it's a prisoner's dilemma. You know, if, if, if China develops AI, America needs to develop AI. If, you know, uh, Alphabet develops AI, Google's company, uh, you know, then Meta, Facebook needs to develop AI. And, and, and that, that kind of competitive landscape is, is not an AI issue. It's an issue on defense. It's an issue on every kind of hunger for resource or power or wealth. And, and as a result, you know, of course, you could see the immediate response of Sundar Pichai, who's the CEO of Google, um, to the open letter is, no, I can't stop. I, I, you know, you, you cannot guarantee for me that everyone else will stop. So why would you ask me to stop and then my company will be vulnerable? And, and you can't blame him. Sundar is an amazing human, okay? You can't blame him. Sundar is basically saying, I am tasked in front of my shareholders with protecting my company's interest. Now, if, for example, the internet had changed from IP5 to IP6, it's my responsibility to make sure that Google is ready for IP6. Now, the world is changing from traditional computing to AI. It's my responsibility that Google leads in AI. And if nobody can guarantee for me that everyone else will stop, I cannot stop. That prisoner's dilemma is the first inevitable. And the first inevitable will tell you that AI will continue to progress and it will continue to progress at a pace 
that is faster and faster and faster by the minute. If you imagine the explosion of AI investments that happened between the time ChatGPT showed uh, you know, in front of people finally, and today, we're talking trillions and trillions of dollars. So the trend is not only continuing, it's accelerating. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real. And he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, do you want to profit from crypto? Then join my DeFi Academy. The Crypto DeFi Academy will help you create generational wealth. But don't take my word for it. Listen to my students. When I first got into crypto, I remember thinking to myself, I need to learn more. Brian Rose, learning crypto, learning DeFi, got to do it. I am so grateful that I jumped in and did this. I had to break through some limiting beliefs that I can do this, that I can afford this, that I can be in this. It challenges um, the things that are deeply rooted within us. Joining DeFi Academy has been one of the best decisions I have made on my blockchain journey. This course was a life changer, a game changer, a huge eye opener coming from knowing practically nothing at the speed of the learning over the over four weeks was just fantastic. The information you provided in this class was invaluable. I feel far more confident in my next steps. You took complex concepts and made them easier to understand. What's different than so many other ones is it just doesn't tell you what to do. It uh, actually makes you do it. This is for people who are serious about becoming traders. This is the way it should be done. I realized from this learning experience again that it is not about what you learn, but about who you learn it from. The energy was insane. I've, I've never experienced such incredible energy on a live call. Brian Rose, you, you are a legend, my friend. It's the only thing in the market where you can get all information and learn everything what you need to know. Everything is so clear and so well done. And I am um, just forever grateful for this program. It made me feel so much more confident about crypto than I did before. I did not anticipate how passionate I was going to become about it. It's got to be like a big learning experience for me, not just in the crypto space, but just uh, an overall uh, balance of life. What I've learned is, you know, how to take ownership, you know, of my life in a way that um, I really, I really hadn't before. Yeah, you can't put a price on that, really. I would recommend it to anybody top-notch. Excellence does not come cheap. You know, so if you want excellence, you got to pay for it, but it's so worth it. Pull the trigger. That's what this course is about. You're not going to regret it, really. It's amazing. Thank you, Brian and team. So what are you waiting for? Crypto is happening now. Click the link below, submit your application, and let me mentor you on how to create generational wealth and build the decentralized financial infrastructure of the future.